This is the last video in this series for setting up the programming for our UI sampler lab. We've already done the buttons, the sliders, the inputs, and now we're going to do the drop downs. And I'm going to show you how to compile this out, how to render it out. I guess not render would be the right word, but how to build this out into a executable. Um, in this class, you do have to submit your projects as well as your executables. So this will be a good practice um, and reference if you forget how to do that. So that will be at the end of the video. So if you're looking for that, um, just you know, jump to the, towards the end. We'll, we'll do that at the end. So we do have to set up some stuff about our drop down before we get into the programming. Um, when we did the GUI setup, I said, don't worry about what's in there for now. We'll deal with that later. And this is where we're going to deal with it. So we don't want option A, option B, option C. What we want to have happen is um, we're going to have different words in here. So that if those are selected, it changes this test text to that word. So with the drop down selected, I'm going to scroll down to here. See how it says option A, option B, option C. We want to change these to test dog and cat. Um, test, I mean, it's the same, but if we change it to dog, and then we can change it back to test if we want to, or we can change it to cat, and change it back to test, and um, still change. One thing I want you guys to be aware of, and I'll probably go over this again um, in the video, um, we're not going to be sending this the actual text in here. Think of these as positions because we're going to do this one slightly different. Um, this one is a little bit more of an advanced thing. We're going to do some stuff that we haven't covered in class yet. Um, it's going to be stuff that you're going to, you should be reading about for next week, but um, kind of as a preview of all the fun stuff that we're going to be doing. Think of these as positions. Um, and it does start at zero. So this is position zero, one, and two. You're going to find a lot of programming things. Um, this is in position one. This is position zero, or yeah, so position zero. So think of it as zero, one, two, not one, two, three. So um, let's jump over to our code. And this is going to be our last event. So I'm going to just copy this and put it down here just so I know how to find this easier. This is going to be a drop down event. And this one's going to be different. Um, like I said, we're, this is a little bit more advanced. Um, as the weeks go on, um, actually in the next couple weeks, a lot of this will make a little bit more sense when we start covering what a function is. We're going to go over this in more detail. But what we want to have happen is when somebody changes what's selected, when, when the value changes, we want an event to happen. So um, you know how like, usually like in like the buttons we have an on click event. If we go to our drop down, we have an on value changed event. So when this changes, something happens. We're going to have this change. But notice um, if we go back to the button real fast, it looks like this. On the drop down, we have this int 32. So what this means is when we have this event, when the value is changed, we're going to have an integer sent along with it. Um, the information is going to be which position did it change to? Is it the zero position, the one position, or two position? And this is going to be useful because we'll be able to change our text based on the number here. So that this one's slightly different. Um, so let's keep that in mind as we go over here. We are going to go and start a new event. Um, it's still going to be public because we're going to have to hook it up to that drop down just like we did um, with the buttons. But rather than, um, we're going to call this one on drop down change. Normally we keep this empty 
Instead, we want to we we want to recognize that there is going to be an integer sent with it. So I'm going to say um, I'm going to give it a name. Well, first we have to declare what type of variable is it going to be. It's going to be an integer, and I'm just going to call this one choice. This is this has to be an integer because that's what's sent along, and we know that because it says it right here. It's going to be an int 32, which it's it's just an integer. Um, this name is what I came up with. It should be a descriptive name. Um, that kind of tells us what this number means. It means the choice that the user decided on, 0, 1, or 2. So now we can use this to change our test text. And um, again, we're going to do something a little bit advanced. We haven't talked about this in class. Um, it is in your reading for this week, though, so if you want to um, read about it before you do this, that's fine. But we are going to use if statements. If you've done any programming, you've probably encountered if statements before. Um, this is just a Boolean statement that says if something is true, do this. Um, and we are going to do it based on this. So we're going to say if choice, this thing right here, is equal to zero. And it does have to be the, this double. This is a comparison. This says, this checks to see is this equal to this? We don't want to do this. This is this is a mistake, and you should get an error saying that something weird is going on, because um, you're trying to set this equal to this something. We don't want to do that. We want to say we're going to compare. We're comparing these, and if it's equal to that, we're going to do something. So we need more curly brackets, and if this is true, we're going to do code in here. Note that there is no semicolon there. Don't put a semicolon in here by accident. That's a, like if you're getting an error, double check that there's no semicolon there. Um, so in here, what we're gonna have happen is if it's the zero choice, test text dot text is equal to test. Um, we can, we know what it, what it, what we want it to be. Um, make sure it is the double so, because we're sending it a string, so it's just test. That's fine. So, if we choose choice zero, make sure it says test. Um, below these, don't accidentally do it inside. Um, that's a nested if statement, um, which we use in some circumstances, but not this one. Make sure we're below those curlies. If choice is equal to one, oh, sorry, one test text dot text is equal to dog and then again below this make sure you're not doing it inside make sure there's no semicolon here if choice is equal to two test text dot text is equal to cat and that's it. That's all we have to do. Um, if statements are super useful, we can do entire, you know, a decent, simple, simple game using just if statements if we wanted to. Um, they're very powerful. We're going to be using them a lot. So this is like a nice preview to stuff that we're going to be doing in future labs. So let's save it. Go to Unity. Um, we do have to hook up our event to this. So, um, same as before, we'll click the plus button. We need to add our UI controller to that because that's where it's going to be at. There's one big difference here, so make sure you're paying attention to this. When we go to add our event, notice we now have this little one up here, this dynamic int, where before we, we were just doing these, these are static perimeters. Do not choose it from here. It has to be up here, this dynamic integer. This tells us, this tells the program that um, that integer, that int32 right here, this is going to be changing. It's dynamic. If we choose static, that means it's not ever going to change. So if we, if you set this up and realize it's not working, double check that you chose this one up here, you know, and you didn't do this one by accident. So we'll set on drop down change and let's save and try it so we're test dog cat um, we can still rotate it 
um, we can make it bigger or smaller and we should be able to reset it and that works and we have all of our programming done. So the one thing I do want to show, um, I do want to show how to um, build this out. Part of your grade is being able to build out a working version of your labs. Um, you also have to do this for your um, projects as well. Um, all over your tests you'll have to do a build. So let's go over how to do that. Um, first thing, I would make sure Visual Studio is closed. You want to make sure that you are not accidentally missing any saves so that um, you don't want to miss anything. Um, keep in mind that if you have any errors in your console from your coding, it will not build out. So you need to make sure that your, your code will compile before you do a build um, or it's not going to work. You probably want to double check it a couple times. You want to make sure you test it. Um, to make sure it's it's fine and then we are ready to do it so make double double make sure it's saved hit control s to save we're going to go to file build settings and a new dialog box should have popped up we always want to make sure that um, we have our scene if this is empty it's not going to work usually by default it might have the one that you created but if it's not in here just click Add Open Scenes. This will make sure that the scene that we're working with is in there. It should have a checkbox because we want to make sure that we we have a scene to work with. Um, you do have to do a Windows build. Um, we don't take any of the other builds, so if you have a Mac, make sure you're building for the PC. Um, you might have to use our Open Lab or Class Time to do this because you do want to check it to make sure it's working. So unfortunately, if you have a Mac at home, you do have to make sure you're doing your builds at school for that. So let's click Build. And I do like to make sure that I am building to a new folder outside of my project. This way that in case there's an issue, I can easily um, delete the whole folder and start again. And I'm not like hunting around inside of my project for it. So I'm going to call it UI Sampler build all in capitals so it's easy to find and it differentiates them. So I'm going to select that folder and it is going to build it out. Um, this one builds really fast because it's not very complicated. If you have more complex games obviously they'll take a, a lot longer to build but we are going to get it. It should open it up and we should also get a player. It might be on my other screen. Where did it go? Sorry, there was probably a little blip there. I had to pause it for a second. Um, I think I accidentally hit build instead of build and run. So I'm just going to do it again. So UI sampler build. Um, that's this folder. I'm going to select it and let it build out again. And it should pop up a screen like this. So one thing that's important is that you want to make sure that you are running it at the same resolution you built it at. And I believe this is the one I built it at. Otherwise, it's going to get kind of weird. Um, I usually also do it at a windowed, so it's easy to exit out in case something's broken. So let's try this out. And, oh, hold on. It's not liking me pulling it over. Let's see if this will work. There we go. So here's our build. Um, we could give this to somebody and then they could play it on their computer. So let's test it out. Let's give a random number. We can rotate it. We can scale it. We can change to a dog or a cat and scale it again and rotate it. We can add two numbers together. And we can also reset it. And it goes back to normal. And let's test that quit button that we haven't been able to test yet and it quits out. So that works. Um, something I want you guys to be aware of. When you give somebody your build, it needs to be this whole folder. You have you can't just give them like this exe. Um, it needs all of this stuff in there or else it's not going to work. So if you need to give it to somebody, um, like, like I don't know, let's say you have to submit it for, for a grade. Um, make sure your 
um, right click, send to compressed, that you zip that entire folder. Um, let's also go over submitting the project. So once you're satisfied, you're ready to submit it, and it's all saved, let's exit out of Unity. It's important to exit out before you try to do this step. We need to submit this whole project folder. You can't just give me like this file or some other random file. It's not going to work. Like you can't just give me um, your scene file. It needs everything in there. Um, it's not going to have like your script or anything. So it's very important you give me this whole folder for your project. So we're just going to right click, send to compressed. So and it's going to zip it up. Um, if you're transferring files off of your work um, work work here at Wake Tech and you want to take it home with you, it's a good it's a good habit again to, to zip them up before you submit it. Don't just try to submit the whole um, you know don't try to just move over the whole folder. It moves nicer if you zip them up. And okay, so it's done. When you submit this project, you're going to submit these two files. Don't zip these up. There's no reason to zip up a zip file. Um, it will be a little bit easier to just submit these two. So make sure that you submit this one and this one. Um, it's the whole entire folder. So this whole folder, this whole folder. Don't try to find some random file to submit. It has to be the whole thing. So hopefully you found this series useful. And um, oops, if you have any questions, obviously ask your instructor. But hopefully you got this to work nice and you had fun doing it. I'll hopefully see you in another video.